So in October 2008, Nate and I, my brother, we're driving around sort of in the idea that we we're looking for a place to maybe move into, make a recording studio and maybe live there. We didn't really know what, uh, what exactly we were looking for. And we came across this place. We looked at a couple of places out in the country and uh, we looked, we came into this place and it was kind of just a normal ranch house. The driveway was really beautiful and it was, it was really close to our parents' house, like growing up, like it's three miles, we're three miles from what kind of like the house we grew up in. And um, we came into this place in a sort of weird ranch house, kind of odd vibes. And then we wa you walk downstairs into this sort of like laundry room looking area. And, and then there, there's this giant window looking into this room that we're in now that was an indoor pool. This, so this room that we're sitting in now is this giant indoor pool with this window looking into it. And so the realtor is going on and on about, and the foundation's good and the plumbing is this. And me and Nate are just looking at each other like, do you see this? This is like one of those recording studio windows. We kind of instantly were just immediately interested in the place and there was a lot of bedrooms and it was just kind of like this blank slate in a lot of ways. So, you know, it started out with like this room. This is the room that we kind of wanted to make into the, uh, the main kind of recording space, but it was just literally like kind of moldy indoor pool with like unusable space. And so Dan uh, built like a big, uh, framework and, and I bought this basketball floor from like a middle school off of Craigslist in St. Paul and, and we, we, came, we brought it all in and, and, and built it. He designed the ceiling and they, they redid the den, the old kind of laundry room looking place and just kind of built it out. And me and Brian would purchase gear and we'd find microphones and all this whole time kind of like waiting for the carpet guy to finish so I could record and reset up the keyboard and do this stuff and redo a vocal track or something. And so it was really interesting the whole time we had the place and building out the actual space. It was kind of like while the, the record was being made, sort of like this building metaphor for the record and also just this place that felt kind of like summer camp. And then we did some work to the bathrooms and the, and the bedrooms and we got like a bunch of bunk beds out here. We had a listening party for all the people on our labels and booking agencies and things. And we, we can sleep 18 out here now. Um, we had uh, our fabulous friends up in Minneapolis doing the music video out in the barn, you know, so they made a video studio to this crazy situation. So it's, it's, it really has become like, uh, kind of like this art space, but for people from Wisconsin. So it's not like this weird thing where it feels like an art space. It just feels like a, a place where a lot of things happen. You know, we made the gangs record here. The volcano choir record here was, was done in the early stages and so like just a lot of things happen here. I think why this new record sounds the way it does as compared to like for Emma, you know, for Emma was whether it was the cabin or, or in North Carolina or wherever I was working on it, um, it was me alone in sort of reverberant places, but like not good reverb, kind of like small crappy rooms and small area with not good acoustics and so that sort of had a lot to do with like the creakiness of that record and like the black and whiteness of it. And I think just sort of like the excitement of sort of like be not being in my early 20s anymore and sort of building this place with my friends and, and really kind of expanding on what Bon Iver could be as a, as a project and moving in here and really and truly becoming like a team building this place um, had a lot to do with it, 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 its color, the new record's color and also just the, the space being more lush and like carpeted and a lot of cedar wood and like old maple and, and just like old found barn wood and like in a weird way it's more cabiny than anything people probably imagine you know when we moved in it, um, it was a family home and the family had sort of moved on and, and actually the man who lived here passed away and, and the family had all grown up and moved away and, and so when we moved in he was a veterinarian and there was a um, a vet's clinic. They had a, like a home vet clinic where people would show up. And in fact, the first couple of months when we moved in, people were showing up with their animals and be like, hey, is the vet still here? And we are like, nope, sorry, just some scruffy dude smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Their 
There's a Sony C37 microphone that sort of became the cornerstone microphone for the record. And uh, it's a microphone I used in Montreal in a studio. And it just, it's, it's so special. It's from the 50s. And uh, it, it's just got such a look about it. And it's got such a smooth sound. And it's just like a timepiece kind of. Um, it's great. Um, there's a couple guitars that sort of really made the record happen too. And uh, a Les Paul gold top thing that was really beat up that I found, and then a Korg M1, which is the Bruce Hornsby keyboard um, that they used in all the In The Range recordings in the, in the early days, and uh, that became really vital too. So that, I'd say those are my favorite pieces of gear. There's this X-Files sort of uh, storyline with Mulder, and his, his, the whole thing is about his younger sister being kidnapped or by the aliens. It's way cooler than just an alien show, by the way. But uh, April Base is the military base where they, where she was taken from, you know, where like the cigarette smoking man lived and there's all this like lore and history. But mostly I just liked how that sounded. And uh, I, I, I didn't want to name this place. I thought it was kind of corny, but we ended up did just calling it The Ranch and stuff. And I was like, you know, let's not call it The Ranch. Let's just go ahead and call it something cool, April Base. So it's kind of like it's fitting. We're here at spring and it's when everything gets renewed. April Base. Cool, should we cut it? Is that good? Yeah, man. Yeah,